Hey guys, welcome back. Continuing the Pagan Ritual Festival theme, today we're covering another piece of incredibly spooky spine-tingling flood lore. Last time we took a look at what happens when groups of individuals get a little bit too obsessed with the flood, but today we're taking a look at sort of the opposite of that. Kind of. Well, not really, but sorta. Of. Today, we're going into the gory, disturbing details behind the infection, torture, and assimilation of Captain Jacob Keyes. The torture and mutilation Keyes endured at the hand of the Flood was arguably the worst the parasite had ever inflicted in their 100,000 year history. We're talking physical mutilation, psychological mutilation, emotional mutilation, and much, much more. And in a very fitting fashion, if my voice sounds kind of off in this video, it's because I'm ill. Flu or something like that. I think after the last video, the flood finally got to me, so if I suddenly like just stop posting videos or posting on Twitter or anything, then it's probably because I'm part of a grave mind. Yeah, you might want to watch out for that. But anyways, let's begin the tingling of the spine. This terrifying tale begins on the 20th of September, 2552. Following his rescue from the Truth and Reconciliation, Captain Keyes made his way back to the UNSC's forward operating base on Alpha Halo, aptly named Alpha Base. Sometime before, an elite by the name of Qualamy was captured and taken back to the base for interrogation. Now, for reasons unclear, this elite had become apparently disillusioned with the Covenant and was very willing to dish out tactical secrets to the UNSC. He revealed the location of a major weapons cache hidden deep within one of the Halo swamps, and immediately a robust fire team was formed to investigate. Sergeant Major Avery Johnson joined up with Fireteam Charlie, who took part in the raid on the Truth and Reconciliation, as well as Second Squad, and the group were led by none other than the recently rescued Captain Keyes. Bit of a ballsy move from the captain, but you know, I respect it. Wasting little time, the coalition boarded a pelican and headed to the coordinates provided by the elite. The reason they'd assembled such a large strike team was because they very clearly expected heavy Covenant resistance. But when they arrived at the swamp facility, they found the opposite. It was quiet. Too quiet. For such a seemingly important location, there was a distinct lack of any Covenant. At least until they moved further into the station, where they stumbled across the remains of those who were once stationed here. Their bodies mutilated and defiled beyond human comprehension. This clearly wasn't the work of any human soldiers, and it was unlikely that any members of the Covenant were capable of this either, save for maybe the Brutes, but as far as Keys and the crew were aware, the Brutes were not members of the fleet that followed the Autumn to the Ring. But as puzzled and oddly disturbed as they were, they had a mission to complete, so they pressed forward. Maybe this was just a blessing in disguise. Maybe the weapons cache was left totally unguarded for them to just swoop in and steal without breaking a sweat. Ah, if only it was that simple. As we all know, that was far, far from the case. When the team broke through a suspiciously tightly locked door, they hit a dead end, if you'll pardon the pun, and the horror of the facility was unleashed. The Flood. Only a few members of the strike team managed to escape the ambush, and unfortunately, Captain Keyes was not one of them. During the chaos of the outbreak, an infection form had managed to catch him off guard and latch onto his neck, officially beginning the infection process. Now, at this point, the Flood outbreak was very much in its first stage, the Feral stage, where constructing a proto grave mine to command local infected is absolutely paramount. To command efficiently, raw knowledge is required, and so whenever a host is infected, the Flood dig through their brains to see if there's anything of use, and whether there is or not is a deciding factor in how the host's body is used by the parasite. Initially, Keyes was turned into a simple combat form, but as the infection form dug through his memories, the, at the time, small collective consciousness of the Flood realised that this host was far, far too important to become what was essentially cannon fodder. In a vile, sick and twisted way, this lump of biomass was destined for something greater. When Keyes awoke, he had this sudden urge to repeatedly recite his name. Keyes, Jacob, Captain, 
Service number 01928-19912-JK. After some repetitions, he then felt a strange sort of intrusion in his mind. A presence, a third party, that was angry at him for remembering his name for some reason. Although he was still none the wiser as to where he was, his distorted memory was slowly managing to reform. He remembered hallways full of enemies. Now, he couldn't remember who or what these enemies were, but he could remember that there were far too many of them for his team to handle, followed by a memory of a sharp, intense stabbing pain. Based on that, he assumed that he'd been captured, and that this strange feeling was a new form of interrogation the Covenant were using. So, he continued reciting his name, rank, and service number, denying the enemy any of the secrets that he knew. Secrets about the UNSC, about humanity, and the location of Earth. However, while he was fixated on these repetitions, an intense buzzing pressure was increasing in intensity, deepening its invasion into his mind, which terrified him, yet still he persisted. But little did he know, his persistence was futile. All of a sudden, familiar personal images began playing before him, which he quickly realized was the present sifting through his memories like a grave robber, and he was powerless to stop it. Then, he felt the sensation of the first woman that he'd ever kissed, a strangely warm feeling that was ripped away from him in an instant. The feeling was as if his entire essence was being pulled apart right before him, with some pieces being taken for study and others left behind. He tried to hold onto the memories that were being left, but as quickly as he could grab them, they were being stolen from him, and he continued to sink into this bottomless void with nothing to keep him up. Time in this state also seemed to just not exist. There was no measure of it, and even if there was, Keyes would not have had the mental capacity to focus on it. All his energy, what little he had left, was spent holding back this presence. When suddenly, he realized something. This presence wanted something. It wasn't scanning through his memories for no reason. There was something specific in there that it was after. And as Keyes continued to resist in his consciousness, it came to him. Escape. Fueled by its primordial urge to feed, it wanted to escape the ring to reach a better feeding ground. Earth. Another sharp tendril stabbed into his mind, retrieving images of Earth sunrise, quickly followed by cows being led into a slaughterhouse. But Keyes managed to resist, replaying memories from his childhood to try and block the intrusion. Knowing full well that it would be the end of everything if this entity were to find Earth, he had only one soul-crushing thing to do. He took all his fondest memories of Earth, from his childhood, his adulthood, and all stages of his life, and forced them down as deep as he could, masking them with more mundane memories like smells, the taste of food, and the like. As the valiant captain that he was, he was prepared to sacrifice anything and everything to protect the last bastion of humanity. Now that Reach had fallen, Earth was all they had left, and if it meant sacrificing everything he held dear to protect it, then he was damn well ready to do that. As he continued to delete his most precious memories, he felt pieces of him slipping away. The essence of who he was was falling into the void beneath him. When suddenly, he heard voices. It was Chief and Cortana. Where most people would have been thrilled to hear friendlies coming to rescue them, Keyes was terrified. If this thing managed to capture those two, then all really would be lost. So, in a scream of anguish, he cried out to tell them to leave and get out now. Chief, don't be a fool. Leave me. Captain? Captain? I've lost him. However, it was actually very lucky that the two had arrived when they did. Keyes really was fighting a losing battle, and his defeat was quickly approaching. As his energy depleted, the intruders only increased, as if it could smell that it was getting closer to the information that it sought. As Keyes' light began to fade, his shattered mind slowly shutting down. He could feel death finally encroaching, but it was as if it had been waiting for so long to take him that it wanted to save the moment, and slowly, second by second, his life force was absorbed, and Captain Jacob Keyes died at the hand of the Flood. When Chief and Cortana finally reached his position, they were horrified. 
Little to his knowledge, the captain had been used to form the basis of a proto-grave mind, and if they hadn't arrived and taken his CNI transponder when they did, this centralized intelligence would have learned how to fly the truth and reconciliation, taken it to Earth, and consumed what little remained of humanity. Captain Keyes died one of the most valiant heroes in the history of humanity. His death was torturous in almost every manner, more excruciating than almost any other form of death imaginable. And yet, despite this, he was still willing to prolong this excruciating, drawn out process to save billions of lives. Godspeed, sir. Few will ever live up to your legacy. And so, that's what was happening to Keyes as you were blasting through the truth and reconciliation to save him. Pretty horrifying stuff, to put it lightly. If there's anything in sci-fi that does torture the best, then come on, it absolutely has to be the flood. The connoisseurs of physical, mental, and emotional torture. Happy Halloween! So, that's all for today. I'm gonna go and rest my throat now, and hope to god that I don't wake up in the void with a parasite trying to sift through my memories. If the Flood were to, of course, hypothetically capture me, I wonder what memories they'd look for. Oh yeah, definitely my RuneScape cash stack. That's, that's fair. Fair enough. Just know, Gravemind, if you want my RuneScape cash stack, you are gonna have to fight tooth and nail. So, let's end the video before we give the Flood any more ideas. I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons for the support over there, as per usual. And thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one.